Hey guys, it's Janet. Hope you're all doing well. I wanted to do a quick video on how I manage empty school work and a baby. My daughter is almost two in December and I work full time and I go to MP school part time. So like I mentioned in my videos before, uh, school is either one, two or three courses per semester. Right now everything looks, this past summer semester was one course and then starting um, in the fall of 2018 I'll be taking two courses. So first things first, I do have like a little flashcard so I am going to keep glancing down and I just, you know, one day sat down and kind of listed everything that I am either doing that has helped me try and balance everything. Um, it is going to be quite a transition when you return to school, especially if you haven't been going to school, getting back in the rhythm of having to focus, write long papers, you know, lose sleep, all of that. So, and then on the graduate level, you're not only tackling difficult content, but a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So you're like cramming all of this information in your head in two weeks and you're going to be tested on it, which is very difficult to do. And then um, you also have the stressors of just, you know, with your family, your children, things that pop up here and there. So I hope that what I have on here will help you figure things out and make the transition a little smoother. All right, so first things first, support. So like I mentioned before, talk to your support people, your husband, your, your wife, your spouse, your significant other, your best friend, anyone who is able to provide you that support, whether you need to talk to them or let's say if a kiddo is sick and someone is sick, go pick them up and then you are going to take an exam. Like You will need people to be on your side and willing to step up and help you out and encourage you. The biggest thing is like the encouragement as you tackle grad school. It is so much. It is so much because normally if you're in grad school, I mean, everyone is different, but at this point it will be very different if I was single, if I didn't have children, if I didn't have to work versus, you know, I am married, I have a child, I work full time, you know, I also create content here. And so it's life is busy. So I wish I had all the time just to go to Starbucks and just study and that's all I was required to do, but I don't. So give yourself some slack. So find your support system, give yourself some slack, give yourself the time to get through and find your rhythm in grad school. That first class is very, very difficult for many different reasons. And not only just transitioning back to balancing school and work and family, but obviously, you know, testing again, study habits, all of that. So next thing, planner. I always talk about my planner. Make sure you have a planner, um, especially if you have multiple kids and they have activities and then you have obviously classes. If you have one or two classes, you want to make sure you go to one place and then check it every single day so you don't miss anything. Utilize your phone for alarms, especially if you have to log in and attend online classes. You can get your participation points. You don't want to miss anything and Sometimes you'll be able to squeeze in an activity with your family <laughs> in there and you will have to, you know, go to that planner and see where exactly you may be able to fit that in. It's definitely making some sacrifices and that's why speaking with your family in the beginning of everything will help them not only understand what you are going through and what you will be going through, but it'll also hopefully help them understand when you are not able to make things. And that is very, that's very real. I mean, I feel bad all the time that I'm not able to go hang out and do this and do that. So yeah, communicate with them. All right, so um, peers, we ended up doing like a Facebook group for our graduating class. There are some sub Facebook groups on the course. Let's say if you're in the um, pathophysiology course and everyone who's taking pathophysiology that semester is in that Facebook group. So with that type of communication, especially we spend all this time on social media, you can converse uh, between each other and find out, you know, 
how everyone is doing, any tips, did they find any resources that are helpful, questions about assignments. You can keep each other accountable in terms of like any deadlines, you know, any encouragement. So that's how we use our Facebook group. You know, we always list the deadlines, the, the upcoming exams or assignments. If we come across say, a really good YouTube video that's explaining a topic that we're all learning, we can post it there. Even um, pictures, a lot of resources like images or tables, stuff like that. So definitely leaning on your peers. There are only other people that are going through exactly what you're going through and are able to relate. Okay. And I tell you, going to nursing school with your peers, those you will make the best of friends in nursing school because they don't understand the grind that we, we have to go through to achieve our uh, goals. So yeah, lean on your peers and then a study partner. So you may a lot, I guess there is quite a few opportunities to do group work in grad school, whether it's like completing projects, papers, presentations, case studies, all of that. So I have my group that we created and presented our case studies, but then I also had a separate study partner. And this was the person that I would study one-on-one -on -one for exams. Like for instance, lean on her to explain certain things and vice versa. So you want to make sure that you like gel well with your study partner, um, especially if they are in the program and the track. So you can kind of progress and really motivate each other and support each other throughout the entire program. So I remember my first uh, study session with her. I'm like, we have to take a selfie and we're going to document our first study session before exam one of grad school. And then I expect to have a selfie of both of us on graduation day yeah so that means a lot to me and you know we both want this and we both will um, have an opportunity to talk vent to each other and then kind of snap us into place and we've made all of those things very clear and I told her certain things you know if I ever get in a funk like this or if you see me kind of get distracted you know let tell me tell me to get off my phone or um, or if something is going on personal life and it's not the right time to talk and take up all this time go ahead and, and check me and i'm giving her that um, and that goes vice versa um permission to do so because i want us to both succeed okay and that's one thing where i know i mentioned before like it's not good to share your grades with other people but i just want to make sure that if i'm passing she's passing if she's passing i'm passing uh, we want to get through together okay child care so regarding baby so my daughter she goes to daycare monday through friday they open at 6 they close at 6 30 so depending on my schedule i normally just have her at daycare and i go study so it depends on what your situation is can you let's say maybe hire a babysitter for x amount of days so you have an allotted time to be able to study without any distractions. I think that's the biggest thing when you're a parent and you're in school and then you have kiddos and then they have their own lives and then I swear at the worst times she ends up like getting a fever and I have to go pick her up and that may cut into a study session. So you have to be aware that life will happen and that's why mentally and with my planner, I try to plan ahead of time and move faster and do more on those days that I know I have available. So should something happen, I'm not totally flustered. So I remember there was one day where I was studying, I was doing well, and then my daughter got sick and I had to go pick her up. And you know, when she's like only a year and a half, she wants to cuddle and it's very hard for me to not do that and study. So at that point, I do something else. So that kind of goes into like headphones. So Bluetooth headphone, like I mentioned before, you see me wear it. So at that point, like I would cuddle her and I'll have my lectures playing. So find a way to have your lectures in audio format. You can also even create YouTube playlists. That's what I did. And each playlist, it would have, let's say exam one, exam two content and any topic I would go in there, let's say Khan Academy, um, give the topic and then save that to that playlist. So whenever I'm driving, commuting, if I'm doing like bath time or if let's say I'm cuddling with her because she's not feeling well, I have one of those ear pods on in my ear and then at least I am listening to the lecture. So I hope that just helps to reinforce, especially if I just can't sit down and totally focus in on my studying. You know, we are parents and we have to just find a way to balance and that's how I feel 
I have gone, gotten through like my pathophysiology course. I would listen to the lectures when I'm doing like housework, bath time, driving, lunch time, and that really has helped. So I am super excited that I finally started that and I'm able to listen. So find a way to record your your PowerPoints or your lectures and then play that back. Back to the childcare. So Soraya started sleeping on her own in her crib at seven months and bedtime was 7.30. So structure, uh, routine is great. So Sarai snaps for about two hours every single day at 11.30 on the dot. And she goes down, she knows the deal, the routine, and she naps and I get two hours of good study time in there. And sometimes I do schedule online study sessions. So for instance, my study partner and I, and uh, we FaceTime and that's how we literally study. And I'll tell her, hey, I'm about to put Sarai down. Are you available to study? Okay, yes. And we FaceTime and we literally read each other in the notes, discuss, clarify, and then we also use Google Docs. So that's, how, I don't know if you've seen my video, but when we create blueprints to prepare for the exam, we're working off a of Google Doc, which is awesome because I can be on this side. I mean, we're literally, she's in a whole other state. Um, and we're both able to log in and start answering the blueprint and working off of that. We can both see all the changes real time and we're discussing it too. So that's normally how we get through and prepare for the blueprints. Bedtime is also important. So Sarai goes down at 7.30 p.m. every single night unless something is totally uh, different or we're doing something. But for the most part, she starts kind of whining around 7.15. We're doing bath time and then as soon as 7.30 hits, put her down and she sleep. So we started this and I was so grateful because during the RN to BSN, when I was completing my last few courses, she was only itty bitty couple months old and I'm like oh my gosh there's no way I can stay up to read this and take this exam and study and she's getting up and not going to bed till 10 30 so we needed we needed a routine we needed nap times we needed bedtimes so try to implement that if you have older children you may start doing let's say quiet time so uh, schedule or make a routine let's say a quiet time you're able to go to your room uh, stay quiet so this allows you to go and do some work and you can read a book you can go you know watch a movie you can make you know make it educational whatever you want to do but to have them so they could understand to let you kind of do your thing and so they can find other activities that they can also do um, I think uh, I know I've heard people do that I'm like that's perfect especially when they're older um, so they can read a book they can watch a movie they can do a puzzle they can color and hopefully that will minimize distractions. Scheduling and PTO, finding an employer that will work with you that understand and support you to go back to school. That makes all the difference because if you find an employer or a manager that are not helpful, are not supporting you to go back, it's gonna be very hard to make any schedule adjustments. So um, obviously working with them, letting them know that you're in school and then working on the schedule. So if you are going to start grad school, you have to think about study sessions, projects, exam dates, and save up your PTO as best you can. So when those dates come in, that you can set yourself off so you have enough time to study. So for instance, most of my exam dates, I have them as PTO, so then that will only require me to work two shifts that week in preparation of like the exam so I have enough time to prepare for the exam. So if I didn't have any PTO, and let's say they're not working with me on to take time off without any pay, then I would have to work, let's say, three shifts that week and then what if the schedule does not allow me to take the day off of the exam or the day of the exam see what I'm saying so with that planner go ahead and look in advance put those requests in as early as possible communicate communicate with your manager and then if save PTO so you can also save so you can obviously get paid and then you can work less those weeks as you move forward and you kind of hit the clinical semesters where you're putting in all these hours and doing your clinical rotations that's also a great time to save your PTO so sometimes it's going to be very hard I believe my co-workers 
let's see, they go to clinic three times a week, 12 hours, and they also work full time. So they're literally somewhere in a hospital like five to six times a week to try and fit in all of the required clinical hours. So at that point, it would be really good to save all this PTO and then maybe for that semester, what if you can do a PTO per every week and then you're only working two shifts. See what I'm saying? So save your PTO, don't just use it if you don't have to. Um, organization, you've seen all my binders and all of my notes and all of that. There's a lot of content. Find the system that works for you and keep it organized because you may have to reference it as you progress and you have to kind of refresh certain topics. So stay organized. So recently I just started the Pomodoro technique. Um, go ahead and do some research on it. See if that's something you can implement. I realized that I was getting really distracted on how during study time and sometimes I would just not be motivated. So the Pomodoro technique, like in my head, I'm like, I can do this for 25 minutes. Even if I'm having like a hyper day where I'm like, I just want to, you know, do online shopping. I don't want to really study and I want to really read this. So I would put my timer on for 25 minutes. I'm like, I can do this for 25 minutes. So then I would literally sit there, focus and study. And then I look forward to my five minute break. And then I repeat that cycle. So see if that's something you can implement. Try it out. Um, Things to ask yourself, you know, are you really focused? Are you removing, um, are you turning off your phone? What are distractions you can eliminate? And then once you do a couple sessions of the Pomodoro technique, find out if that's really helpful. Are you retaining the information easier because you don't have any distractions? You're not looking at your phone every two minutes. Um, I have noticed that and that's really good. <laughs> so next thing is scheduling some type of family time or activity. I know in the beginning of the semester, I was really feeling guilty that I was back in school. I was not really spending time with my husband and my daughter. And I was totally stressed about trying to figure out grad school. This is my first course. And I'm bombing tests and it's just, it was a whole hot mess and my anxiety was through the roof. And I literally felt like this is not worth it. This is not worth two and a half years of me feeling this way, it's not worth it. Like I don't want to ruin my relationships with my husband and my daughter. I don't, I don't want school to take that away from me. Does that make sense? So what I ended up realizing, obviously I got my anxiety under control. I got, that's much better, I should say. And then I ended up signing Sarai up for gymnastics. So at the end of the day, I told myself, I can spare 50 minutes of the week to spend time with my daughter. I know that sounds horrible and in my mind, like I would literally feel like I don't, I didn't have a second to give, and that felt so wrong. So I had to find something else. So uh, what I ended up doing, sometimes my husband and I will just watch a movie. We may not be able to go to, uh, to the movie theater unless it's like a matinee or something like that. And every single week, we now go to gymnastics together as a family. So we kind of get a little workout in there, and we make these memories, and we see Sarai do her gymnastics and improve, and that really fills the cup of that I'm still making memories, I'm still being present, it's still, you know, family time. It's not as much as I would let I would like, of course not. But at least I know there's something I'm doing on a weekly basis that I can say, hey, I, I don't care about anything else right now. I'm here for my daughter, my husband, and that really has helped bring more balance to the amount of guilt I was feeling. So I hope this video helps. It went a little long. I hope that you guys are encouraged to go back to school, achieve that goal, that dream of yours, and just give yourself some grace. It's going to be a transition. You're going to kind of, what people told me, you'll find your groove. You will find your groove. And at the end of the day, we are making sacrifices right now that will help us change our lives and our family's lives in the future. So you are in a field that you are, if this is your passion, you are called to advance your knowledge to be able to care for people. That We are in a business, uh, a career of caring. So whenever you feel discouraged, think of all of that, okay? So thank you guys so much for all of the support. I really do appreciate it. Um, for all the new subscribers, hello, welcome. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for hopping on this nursing journey with me. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I You can always contact me through like Instagram or DM me or email me and I'll be able to help y'all out. All right, so thank you again for watching. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and share the videos. Bye.